Um, hello from Copenhagen, Denmark. I'm here watching and listening. Thanks for doing these free sh uh, shows, uh, webinars. You're welcome. It's my pleasure. Um, the goal and purpose of this work is to share with you, um, in especially this critical time in our lives, our political situation, and our um, evolution of consciousness is to help you to come out of your mind and fear that is happening in the world because a lot of fear is being pumped up in the space. And a lot of people live in duality, in separation, and anxiety, and uncertainty. And to help you come back into your center, into where inner peace is. And centeredness and inner peace has nothing to do with what is going on in the outside world. The outside world could be in a complete chaos and yet you could be in absolute peace within yourself. And that has been demonstrated to us throughout history by any enlightened master, any awakened master. If you have spent time with the awakened beings uh, in this life, you had a chance to be at their presence, you experience that they are always in their own center and they're not really identified with what is going on in the outside world. They're in the world, but they're not identified to it. That doesn't mean that an awakened being is going to be a stupor or numb to the events of the world, but they're not involved in it. They observe it, they smell it, they touch it, they hear it, but, but there's an indifference in their uh, being of not getting involved into the story and not falling into the fear and buying into it. And that's why we're attracted to them and we like to be around them because they animate peace, comfort, security when we're around anyone who's awakened to themselves. So the very purpose of the Fifth Dimensional Academy of Higher Consciousness is to help you get grounded and come to this place within yourself that you recognize your power. You recognize who you really are and in this recognition of your connection with your own divinity and finding the divine self here within yourself. Not somewhere else, not in a church, not in a monastery, not with a teacher, not in Tibet or in a cave, uh, but here inside yourself, within, within yourself. That's where it is. That's where we're going to look for and discover it, that we always had it and we will always have it. It's not something we're going to gain, because if we gain it, we can lose it. It's something which is always here. So we will recognize that part of ourselves. And as we recognize it, we ease into it and we re relax into it. Okay? So now a part of this journey, the journey inside ourselves, the journey to self-realization, the journey to love, self-love, self-acceptance, and inner peace. A part of this journey is 
we will do a series of meditations, active meditations, that help quiet our minds and help us to sink in to our state of being, a natural state of being, which in this natural state of being, there is no agendas, there is no story, it's storyless. There is no story when you come to your heart. You may be reacting to the events of life in that moment, but there is no story to it. You re react to what is happening, but there is, there is no story coming with it. Storyless. That's how living in this moment is. Living in this moment does not mean that we're going to be irresponsible, not take care of our responsibility. That means that we simply are storyless in this moment and we're not carrying this garbage bag from our past with us and dig into it every once in a while or dig into it all the time. For our actions, our thoughts, our emotions, our motives come from this old past that we have stored in this garbage bag, which most people do. We simply act and react out of right now. <clears throat> I'm sorry, when I pause, I look at the uh, messages that I receive. Okay, there is a couple of people, one lady named Turil, brother from California. Okay, Mia cannot connect. There's a few people cannot connect. So, but you don't have your computer. I'm using your computer. So, um, again, we, uh, I don't know what happened. I could not go online on my computer. Uh, to, Zoom might be having technical difficulties It's right now. possible like our system that we're using called Zoom. Um, I couldn't go back on it. We did the first academy with it and then second academy it blocked me off. So I had to use uh, uh, Shishi's computer and now she doesn't have access to this computer and she can't help anyone else to. Um, maybe she can help you to come from the phone, her phone. So anyway. Um, let's just do a simple meditation. These meditations, uh, for those of you who've been with me, you know what we do, and, but uh, bear with me, I'm going to explain how this is being done. For those of you who haven't done, haven't seen me, haven't worked with me, is the purpose of this meditation is to quiet your mind. or to help you to go beyond your thinking mind. These are different ways of putting it, or help you to go from your head to your heart. So, and they're simple, and they're active meditations, and they work very fast. So the first thing we're going to do is, we're going to keep our attention on our third eye, and, or on your heart, whichever works for you, and we're going to speak a language you haven't spoken. This is called blah, 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 or gibberish. You, we just flush the mind by talking. Whatever wants to come out of your mouth without thinking, we're going to be doing that. And then when I say stop, you stop, and you simply keep your attention on your third eye or your heart by just holding your attention on one place. So close your eyes and just uh, follow me with this. We start. Just let it out. Just just keep saying things. 
So, take a deep breath. Keep your attention on your third eye and just breathe naturally. It's not a mental process. Just breathe naturally. One more time. I beg you, just na na na, watch it, just 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 what it what it is, na na na, just 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 na na na, what it what it is, just 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 what it what it is, just 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 what. Shabba kata sa 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 na wa na ka sa sa na wa na na wa na ka sa na wa na cha cha na wa cha 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 wa ka cha na cha na 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 wa na na wa cha 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 wa ka cha ka cha cha na wa na sa na na ka cha na 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 wa na ka cha cha na cha na na wa wa di ka cha wa na 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 wa di wa di ka cha ka cha cha na wa na ka cha wa ka cha cha na cha na wa na ka da ka cha cha na cha na na wa na ya na wa cha 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 na na wa cha 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 na na ya wa ka cha 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 na 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 wa na ka cha cha na cha na wa na ka cha Take a deep breath. Keep your attention on one point. Keep your attention on your third eye or your heart. Just breathe in very naturally. Don't try, don't force it or try hard. Just simply breathe in and breathe out. The next meditation is a laughing meditation. We're gonna, as you have your eyes closed, we're gonna be laughing. And you keep your attention on the point you like, whether it's your third eye or your heart. So we start. <laughs> <laughs> Ha 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 
attention on one point. One more time. sink into your center effortlessly just simply sink in and just keep your attention on one point whether it's your third eye or your heart chakra by just keeping your attention on one point you're not trying you're not putting effort you're not telling yourself stop thinking do this, do that. You're simply naturally having your attention on one point. Very easy, very effortless. And if you can't do it, don't beat yourself up. Okay. The next meditation is that I'm going to ask you to stand up. We're going to be shaking and making noises. You have your eyes closed, your attention on one point, and we will be shaking and making noises. So and feel free to be as uninhibited as you would like to be. 
So we start. Sink into yourself. Put your heart, put your hands on your heart and repeat after me. I would like you to really mean it what you say. This don't be like a robot and repeating something. Really mean it when you're saying this. And remember, this is an opportunity for you to go through transformation in this very moment right now as as we're speaking so we okay. Got, okay. Well, I, I love myself 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 I love everybody I love everybody I forgive myself I forgive myself I forgive everybody. I forgive everybody. Because I'm love. Because I'm love. Because I'm light. Because I'm light. Because I'm God. Because I'm God. That's why I love myself. That's why I love myself. And I forgive myself. And I forgive myself. I say yes to love. I say yes to love. Yes to love. Yes to love. Yes. Yes. Yes! 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 (laughs) Take a deep breath. Think into your heart. And one more time. Take a deep breath. Sink into your center. Come back to your center. Take a deep breath. And repeat after me. I love myself. I love myself. I love myself. I love myself. I love everybody. I love everybody. I forgive myself. I forgive myself. I forgive everybody. I forgive everybody. Because I'm love. Because I'm love. Because I'm light. Because I'm light. Because I'm God. Because I'm God. That's why I love myself. That's why I love myself. And I forgive myself. And I forgive myself. I say yes to love. I say yes to love. Yes to love. Yes to love. Yes to light. Yes to light. Yes. 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 Take a deep breath. Thank you to your center. Stay in your center.
can go back to your chairs, back to your seats. Close your eyes and just stay in your center. Just breathe naturally, stay in your center. Slowly, slowly. We start. That's the first question. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. I'm gonna answer. So slowly, slowly come back. There, there has been. Thank you for uh, reaching out and sending your questions to me. There's a, there's a couple questions that came in, um, past few days, and uh, these came to the academy on Facebook. Yeah. Uh, this or, in our email. Yeah. Okay. So. Um, they can post on the academy page. Yeah, we do have a open uh, Facebook page. Uh, it's under the title of the Fifth Dimensional Academy of Higher Consciousness Level One. And if you're on Facebook, you can come and join in and uh, post your comments or c communicate with the other members. Uh, we do ask you to be respectful uh, of the other members and um, as you are and not be aggressive with each other. If there's a, uh, by any chance, somebody makes a comment that it doesn't sit with your opinion or your spiritual belief or religious belief. So we're a community here and we're respecting everyone from every tradition, uh, religion, race, background, and uh, country, and everyone's entitled to their belief system and their practice, um, as we're entitled to our own ways. Uh, so I do welcome everyone to join us, as well as you're welcome to Send us your questions via email if you want to have it uh, handled privately and you don't want to uh, reveal your identity. And our email address is info at fifthdimensionalhealing.com. Fifth dimensional healing .com. Okay, so Ms. Shishi, can you read the first uh, question to me? And then, um, yeah, here's our sister. Last week you talked about bit, free will. A little will. bit louder. Last week you talked about free will, and it seems to me that you have an opinion that everything on this earthly plane is part of a bigger construction, and therefore don't, we don't have free will here on earth. But in the same time, when we say, I love myself, we also say, because I'm God. So when we are an equal part of God, how can it be? then that we don't have free will or at least a part of it. Some people 
may have a very strong will to go for what they want, maybe a career, and they achieve it. Others want a career, but they don't get it. Has that anything to do with free will? Some people don't really know what they want to achieve and flow with their circumstances. Is that a sign of letting go of the ego and just being available for the will of God? Okay. So the question of free will, whether we have free will or not, is a very loaded question. I did go over it and I gave uh, an explanation regarding uh, this topic last week. Those of you who are new, you're welcome to, uh, um, would they find uh, the link to it on YouTube, correct? It's, no, it's on our Academy page. It is on YouTube as well, but it's easier to join the Academy page. I'm putting the links right after. Okay. So there are links to our previous recordings, which this one is last week recording. It is on the Academy's page, <coughs> but that's on Facebook, correct? Yeah, but it's on yeah. YouTube as well. Yeah, and it's on YouTube as well. If somebody wants to look for it on YouTube, what do they look for? Let's say somebody doesn't have Facebook. They would search for Fifth Dimensional Academy of Higher Consciousness Level 1. Okay. So if you want to find our previous recordings, you look for Fifth Dimensional Academy of Higher Consciousness Level 1 on YouTube or Zarathustra's Fifth Dimensional Academy of Higher Consciousness and you find the previous recordings because I, actually we are changing, adding the name Zarathustra to it I started doing it a few nights ago, mm -hmm. so it's easier to find them. Um, <clears throat> anyway, uh, things are not really black and white. It depends on which level of consciousness you have come to. And as your consciousness expands, when, when our consciousness is when our point of view, when we're, or I, I use different words, so, and, when you're, uh, when we're looking at things like this, like we've been brainwashed and conditioned to look at life, that it's only this way and there's no other way. And as you can see, the mainstream world, majority of the people on the planet, they're very set on how everything is. And everybody's follow these certain patterns of the rules. And some of us been there, and somehow we awakened, we started to go through some process of noticing that there is something beyond what we've been taught from childhood. And so you start to search. And normally your search may start with this question, who am I? What am I doing on this planet? Uh, where do I come from? Or where do I go to? You know, maybe someone close to you died, and then now you're questioning that, wow, I mean, what happens after you die? Or where do I go? Anyway, you're pulled in this spiritual path and in search of realization and questioning your existence and the nature of the spirit and everything else. So, but the question is that, how does this happen? I mean, did you, do you one day wake up and you decide that I want to be a spiritual person? And why didn't you decide that earlier or, or why don't everyone decide? I want to be a spiritual person. I want to search for God. I want the answers of uh, the secrets of the universe to be revealed to me. Why majority of people on this planet, who you, you may have a lot of them in your family, because most of us feel very isolated. And we come, we grew up in a family that you're the black sheep. You're the only one who awakened in it. And, you know, you're the weird one in your family. You know, oh, her, him, 
oh, I don't know. He's kind of out there. She's kind of out there. Everybody else is very much set in a certain way. Your ways changed. Maybe you're playing with crystals. Maybe you're playing with tarot cards. Maybe you are becoming psychic or you're getting readings. Maybe you have some healing abilities. Maybe your intuitive knowing has increased dramatically. Maybe you're having visions, uh, beings showing up to you. Whatever, whatever it is, we all are being touched by the spirit in some mysterious ways. And we have become seekers. We have become spiritual seekers. We're looking for something. We may not know what we're looking for, but we have been pulled on this path of looking for something. Now, what triggered that? Okay, what's the difference between you and your sister who is very set in life is about uh, growing up and going, getting a college degree and then getting married and having some kids and, and uh, uh, be a good patriot and uh, accumulating as much wealth as possible, having two, three homes, cars, jewelry, investments, and then uh, then you die and da 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 da. The majority of people's goal goal in this planet is to accumulate more possessions, and that's what they're looking for. God to them, maybe you go once a week to the church and go to some rituals, or God is equal to fear and shame. That's, you know, how we relate to God. There's a lot of do's and don'ts that we have to do, and if we don't do, we're sinners, we're condemned to go to hell, or we're not worthy of of uh, going to the next level. So a lot of people relate God to this figure, this man with a big beard who has a stick in his hand and is going to punish you because you didn't do this or you didn't do that. So, but what differ differentiates you being pulled on this path how did that happen? Did you decide that? Was it your own decision at one point? Or just something happened? Most of us, including myself, I didn't make a conscious decision based on my own free will that, oh, today I'm deciding that I want to be a spiritual being. Because coming to this spiritual path actually was not an easy thing. Because I'm going against the flow and against the river or against the flock of my family, my tradition. And, and there's a lot of uh, times that you're being ridiculed, you've been looked down upon, that you're weird. Uh, and a lot of times halfway through, you don't really belong to the old tradition that your family is a part of it, and you don't really feel fit in your new world. And it's very confusing. And sometimes you tell yourself, oh my God, ignorant is bliss. I wish I could go back to my old ways and be like everybody else. I've said that to myself many times, that I wish I could be like everyone else. It would have been much easier than coming on this path and experiencing so much resistance from a lot of people around me and being ridiculed, especially coming out, sticking your neck out the window and saying, I'm a fifth dimensional quantum healer. Ooh, fifth dimensional quantum healer. What the hell is that? You know, I mean. <laughs> I mean, that's pretty much out there, and it's wacky. Fifth-dimensional quantum healer. What kind of charlatan are you? Is this a new gig? You know, 
manipulating people or taking people's money or fooling people. Uh, it's very much out there. And you know, nowadays, we are used to the word psychic. Uh, we hear it all over uh, the media, internet. It's a common word people are using. Or the word healing. A lot of people are healers, uh, uh, medium, channelers, um, whatever. But back in 20 years ago, 30 years ago, the, the, this was not a common thing. And if you came out there and you announced that you do this or you do that, uh, a lot of people looked at you as you, if you're weird. Still, they look at you if you're weird. If you go to uh, the country or places that this is not, or religious areas of your, your country, uh, your, your county, er your province, wherever you live, they look at you as if you're weird. So do you really decide on your own that you want to become spiritual? Or something revealed itself to you? Something pulled you in? Something decided to show itself? If you read poetry or writings from the masters, from Rumi, for example, old Persian Sufi poet, or from Hafez, or from any Western Sufi or mystics, uh, whether it's in a Western tradition, if it's in Southeast Asian tradition, it's Taoism, it's Buddhism, uh, it's Hinduism, ancient Christian mysticism, or it's Kabbalah from Jewish um, uh, tradition, or uh, Islamic Sufism. I'm talking about the branch of the mysticism, or Native Americans, or South Americans, from the mystic branch. There is a lot of reference by different beings. They're referring to that, they're referring to that. The grand spirit, you can call it God, you can call it universal consciousness, whatever word suits you, it resonates with you. You can use that word to referring to that which exists, that universal intelligence which is here and it whispers to you and through the grace i call it the grace of god i call it grace it reveals itself to you it shows itself to you it's like a curtain is opened up you know we're in in a sleep place or in an ignorant place and then this curtain opens up and the self the spirit, God, the divine self, it reveals itself to you. It shows itself to you. And however fast it could be, it could be very quick. It opens up and it closes the, the curtain down. And it can happen in any way. Maybe you are, it's in the 60s and you're on an LSD trip. You took some acid. And all of a sudden, you had an encounter with God. Maybe you're giving, it happens to a lot of women during giving birth. And they're going through this extreme pain and sensations. And it happens, it's been reported that all of a sudden, the woman who's giving birth goes into these transcendental states of oneness with God and experiencing complete bliss or silence or going to these places of being these divine angelic beings. There are people who were about to die and they had an experience with uh, uh, the worlds of beyond and invisible worlds. Uh, people who were doing meditation, 
they're at the presence of their guru or another enlightened being or or you're just simply ironing your clothes and all of a sudden you have a divine experience but do you decide on that before you knew it existed was it your free will or it revealed itself to you and let me ask you another question why are you here today what are you doing here don't you have something better to do isn't there a good movie you can watch a good game can you go to cinema can you don't you have anything better to do today than sitting here listening to me why are you here have you ever asked yourself this question do you know why we're here honestly some of you may want to have a third eye activation some may be looking for spiritual awakening some are curious uh, we all have our own reasons you may be heartbroken and you're looking for some peace um, everyone's looking for their reason will be different than the other person but ultimately what do we want out of this work what is it we're looking for i want you to ask this question from yourself what do you really want and when i look really deep inside myself i realize i want to be happy that's what i'm looking for i want to be happy and if i got happiness from the ordinary life means i thought happiness was in making more money having more sex getting more cars doing more fun interesting things excitement all the time um materials possessions uh being wanted being famous being Da 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 da. I thought happiness was into accumulating things, getting things, being in love with my soulmate, whatever. I was ha looking for happiness in the other world. But then I got everything I wanted, but I still didn't feel, I was still miserable. I was still haunted by jealousy, by anger being impatient, having fear, worriness, anxiety. And then ultimately I realized that the happiness I'm looking for is a solid, permanent space which is not subject to coming and going. It's always there. We all want to be happy. And if you were really really had found this happiness in the material world you wouldn't be wasting your time today with me why would you waste your time going to workshops doing self-realization work if you're really happy and and you feel one with existence why waste your time going to a workshop for three days spending money you would be out there having fun because everything's fun all the time but the reality of life is that things are not fun all the time we suffer and that suffering forces us to look for answers if we have free will and our free will is really i can do whatever i want then i choose to be blissed out in an orgasmic way every moment of my life i'm always like oh it's so good oh great oh. i have a big smile and feel really good all the time every minute of my life i'm feeling good well why can't you do that you have free will exercise your free will feel good all the time think positive things all the time have all these blissful feelings all the time have your body 
be very healthy all the time have everything happen for you all the time you have free will make it happen <laughs> Things are way beyond what we think as black and white of a simple answer. And as I started to say, when I originally started, oh, it's already 12.10. Now, since we started late, uh, for those of you who want to stay longer, I'm going to go a little bit longer because we have technical problems and... Uh, uh, so uh, we will continue this if everyone's okay the ones I'm seeing if you're fine with that just say yes and then I'll just go a little bit longer as I mentioned earlier is everything it depends where your level of consciousness is as you're expanding and you're coming out of the box and you're starting to see there is a lot more beyond all these things you thought was the reality. Your reality is changing and you're expanding. Your level of consciousness starts to change. And it's starting to change the concepts of free will or destiny or if God is in me, or I'm one with God, uh, I'm separated, or I'm one. If I'm one, why am I going to say, am I one with God? You know, these things start to change too. And you begin to see, yes, you use language, because we're in third dimension. We're in third dimension. Anytime I use language, the opposite of it is valid too. So if I say I'm one with God, then you can come and tell me, why do you say you're one with God if you are one with God? But when we use language, then the opposite of it comes with it too. Because it happens in the world of duality. It happens in th third dimension. But the absolute truth is something you cannot explain it. You cannot bring the absolute truth into words. Because if you want to bring it into words, as I said, the opposite of it is equally true. The absolute truth, you cannot explain it. You can only be it. The fifth dimensional uh, frequency of being is not something I cannot explain it to you. I can refer to it. I can say fifth dimension is a unified field of oneness without the illusion of duality. There is no duality into oneness. It's all one. But you cannot go in there and say, oh, I'm experiencing it. It's all one. Because now if you're in it, there is no you anymore. You have become one. And you cannot bring it as a trophy. Oh, wow, I went to fifth dimension and it's all one. Well, when you go to fifth dimension, there is no you anymore. It's only fifth dimension. It's only that. And you do experience it. You have one foot in fifth dimension in the complete state of oneness. And you have one foot in this world of duality. Those of you who've been with me at my previous, uh, in the academy or workshops, we have experienced that together. When you go into absolute silence, when your mind is not there, you're not here, you're completely here, you go to this place of absolute bliss and it's very flat, it's silent. There is no emotional ups and downs, there's no thoughts, and you experience your vastness of being, you become that. Again, these are words. You become that. You're already that. We can sit down and argue that. Oh, but you said we become that. 
Yeah, I have to because I need to convey this to you in words. But then you can be nitpicking my words and saying you said that. And then we can keep going and on and on and on and on and on and days of going back and forth with each other. But when you go to this place of complete being and there is no thought, you have gone beyond your mind through meditation, through your practice, whatever. And you simply are. And you're in this place of being. Then there is no question there. No question rises saying that, uh, what about uh, me being one with God if I am God? You know, there is no more questions. You simply are. But when you come to this place that you feel you're separated, and of course you feel like you have your free will, then the question also comes. A question comes because you're back into a duality place. And the question is very valid. I'm not saying this is an invalid question. You should not be asking it or I have no intention of punishing anybody for bringing this question, which is very valid question. It's very sincere, it's very honest, and it's very innocent. But when you're in this place of total being, and there's no mind, then there's no question. And there's no concerns that, am I one with God? What happens to me after I die? Do I have karma? What is my past lives? There's no question there because there's no thoughts. And I challenge you not to believe what I'm telling you. Don't accept my words. Find out for yourself, do the practice, and go to this place, and see it for yourself, that when you're in this place, is there a question? Is there a concern? Are you worried about what's gonna happen in the world? When you're in deep meditation, in pure silence, is there any concerns about what happens to the world? Thanks, appreciate it. What happens? What is going to happen to planet Earth? Are we going to survive? What's going to happen to the economy? What's going to happen to the politics? When you're in pure meditation in this quiet place inside yourself, all of these questions disappear. And that's where Gautama Buddha, Buddha, that's where he, he went. He discovered that. All the enlightened masters, every, every sage that we know, they discovered this place inside themselves. Therefore, we call them awakened beings. Because what did they wake up to? They awakened to their own true nature. It's a simple state of being. That's it. And you all have that. You all experience it in your daily life. We just don't have any guides we, guiding us, telling us where to look for our own divine oneness. Because we're caught in our minds. And we believe everything we hear here. So therefore, we're in our individual prisons, in this slavery mode, until we become a spiritual seeker and we start looking for it. So I hope I answered this question. What is this? Astral projection. Okay, there's another question that had come, uh, and we're, we're out of time. And that's about astral projection and uh, out-of-body 
experiences. There is a message came in. Let me check this message to see what. Well, thank you, appreciate it. Uh, I think this message came from Hawaii. Aloha, ma mahalo. Well, thank you, I appreciate. Uh, I will answer the second question next week because we're uh, running out of time. And uh, it's a pleasure to serve you and to be with you. It's my honor. And I do intend to continue our broadcast uh, feel free to reach out, uh, connect with us via email or Facebook. Again, our email address is info at fifthdimensionalhealing.com or come on my website, zaratustra.tv or reach out via Facebook. Is there anything else? Uh, is there anything else? Do you have any announcements? No. For those of you in Southern California or in the US or wherever, this coming weekend, starting Friday afternoon, I am uh, teaching fifth dimensional quantum healing level one, fifth dimensional quantum healing and awareness training level one here in Los Angeles. And it's a two and a half day healing training course. And then at the end of the weekend, uh, those who participate and complete the two and a half days, they receive a certificate of completion. So you, we still have some early bird uh, seats left. I think we have one or two left, correct? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So it's a discounted seats. If you still, if you feel uh, drawn, to being a part of this training and be together. Uh, I welcome you to join me and we will have fun. And uh, we learn a lot of things. It's not only learning healing techniques because the whole entire program is designed to find inner peace. And uh, also next week, if you remind me, I would like to talk about get more in detail of talking about that, wh what really we're looking for, all of us, which really it's ultimately we want to be happy. That's what we want. And how can we find this happiness and stay in this place ultimately? And what is a, what is a state of ultimate happiness versus the, uh, happiness as an emotion that comes and goes because they're two very different and i can talk about that if you guys remind me because i forget things <laughs> these days my life has been very busy someone has to remind me maybe shishi will put a note and then i'll talk about it okay um rosalie can you stay on the webinar i i like to talk to you for a few minutes afterwards everyone uh leaves okay thank you stop recording okay I'm going square. To, all right thank you very much namaste god bless you sending you lots of love and light